Well, here in Singapore, the ASEAN regional meeting is getting underway and representatives from non-member states are invited too. North Korean Foreign Minister Ri Yong-ho will be attending, as will the American Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo. He's, of course, been to North Korea a few times since the summit between uh, President Trump and Kim Jong-un here in June. But it's not clear whether the two foreign ministries will actually meet on this occasion. Well, with me now is James Crabtree. He's an associate professor at the Lee Kuan Yew School of uh, Public Policy. Welcome to the programme, James. So, first off, you know, Mike Pompeo in town this weekend. What's he likely to achieve at this meeting, considering, as we reported earlier, there's been a code of conduct that China has finally agreed to that will lay the groundwork for uh, how to behave in the South China Sea? Yeah, Pompeo's got a lot of work to do. Uh, he's trying to damp down fears about the trade war. He's trying to make progress on North Korea. As you say, the South China Sea, China and ASEAN are making nice to one another. But there's a bigger issue behind this, which is all around Asia, former friends of America are now increasingly skeptical mm -hmm. of America's security guarantee and its commitment to the region. And he has to try and find a way of make people, making people believe that America is here for the long term and isn't going to give up on Asia. Well, let's go back to the notion of Asia a, a little later, but let's focus on North Korea. Still very much in the news, of course, the returning 55 uh, uh, cases of uh, US uh, soldiers uh, and their remains this week. We know Pompeo's been several times, in fact, three times, uh, to uh, North Korea. So what's he achieved so far? They seem to be making a tiny bit of progress. There was some evidence in the last couple of weeks that there have been some facilities that are being dismantled, and uh, this is fairly cosmetic stuff. Uh, nonetheless, it's better than nothing. Uh, the fix that Pompeo finds himself in is this is his big priority. This is what matters to Donald Trump. And the Americans are in a very difficult position because in the end they're not going to get uh, Kim of Korea to give up his nuclear weapons, but they have to try and nudge them in the right direction and make it look like this huge gamble that Trump took here in Singapore is going to work. All right. And now looking at Asia, of course, you talked about Pompeo uh, here to try to increase America's influence in this region. Earlier this week, he pledged uh, $130 million of US investments into Asia, of course, a drop in the ocean compared to how much China has been spending on its Belt and Road Initiative in the region. So it obviously looks like these two powerhouses are battling it out in this tug of war for influence in this region. Who's ahead? Well, Pompeo's speech earlier this week, as you say, it had a headline figure, a tiny amount of money that the Americans managed to rustle up. And it's hard not to think that looked at around this region, the kind of people who are meeting here in Singapore today, they're going to look at that and think this is really pretty laughable. Now, America has other strengths. It has military relations. It has trade relations. It has things it can do here that China can't. But at the moment, it looks like America's on the back foot and China's making the running. And very briefly, though, of course, this is a very long-term question. How do you see all these geopolitical dynamics playing out in, in the months and years to come? But the question is, can America maintain the confidence of its friends in this region, Singapore, Japan, Korea? Do these countries believe that under Donald Trump, America is in Asia for the long term, or do they think he's going to cut and run? That's what they've got to try and uh, convince people. If they can't do that, people will start making other plans. All right, James Crabtree, thank you so much for coming in thank and you. sharing your analysis.